Good morning. I'm Ed Scott, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Rialto, and I would like to welcome you here today to our annual Memorial Day tribute. It's a beautiful day. It's good to see a big crowd out here today, and um, I'm glad you're all here. Assisting me today as Master of Ceremonies is my good friend, uh, Virgil Van Herdy. He is the past and future commander of American Legion Post 422 here in Rialto. Welcome, Virgil. Thank you, Ed. First, I would like to thank all of the American Legion members. Please raise your hands. I especially appreciate the help and the support that you've given to this presentation today. It takes a lot of hands and a lot of effort. Uh, at this time, I'd like to go through the eras that the American Legion recognizes as a significant conflict. World War One. I'm sorry to say there are no survivors. The last person passed away February 2nd. Her name was Florence Green. She was in the Royal Air Force in England and she missed being 111 by 12 days. Uh, Fred McGruff, our last survivor, was 109 when he passed away in Virginia. He snuck in a little early, got in at the ripe age of 16, and uh, they tried to kick him out and he stayed. Uh, and there's very little known about uh, the Soviet bloc, if there are survivors or not. Let's continue. World War II. I'm going to recognize one gentleman that I know very well, Carl Wittig, right down here in the front row. Are there any others? Two more ladies right here, that's great. special little presentation for the Korean War. How many Korean folks do we have here today? <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> Lebanon, Grenada. Panama, the Gulf War and the War on Terrorism, August 2, 1990 to present. Thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Rialto's own First Lady, our Mayor, Mayor Grace Vargas. Thank you, Ed. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that. You know, God intended it to be a beautiful day for this very special blessed day because today is the time that we need to remember all, and I mean all, all forces that went to war, that died for us so that we could be a mayor like myself, the senator, and so forth and so on. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here today. And I want to thank all of you that went to war and fought for me in our country. And I know when I speak to people, you know, and men and women that have gone to war at one time or another, and they tell me the stories, it's unbelievable 
how they come home to have all that in their minds and they don't forget. You know, so, so today God gave us this beautiful day. As you well know, the past few days have been a little bit chill, a little bit cold. And, um, and today, God just sent us this beautiful day. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today to make this a beautiful and exciting and uh, thinking of all our men and women that fought for us so that we can be here today. And again, thank you. Please enjoy the event. We have a lot of surprises for you. It's going to be a nice one. And every year, it seems to get better, bigger. And thank you, Barbara, and everybody that has anything to do with this event. It's a beautiful day. Thank you for being here. Please enjoy the event. <laughs> Don't forget our time out there. Don't forget. I'd like to introduce our post chaplain, Richard Knight, and he will offer opening prayer. Yeah, uh, please uh, uncover while I give prayer. Oh God of hosts, we bow our heads for thankfulness for the victory that Thy has granted us to us and those people who are united with us to stamp out the evil of aggression, tolerance, and greed. We beseech thee to bring the blessing of understanding to family and friends into this and other lands of those who have given us lives to the man of the free. Grant, O oh Lord, of those closest fallen may mingle the pain of their loss in, in nodding light of sacrifice of civilization, sacrifice for a better word for this and other generations yet unborn. Grant to us, O oh Lord, the courage to live with family of nations around the world that would end the strife with the beginning of enduring peace with nations that may resume their differences by peaceful means. Touch thy soul of people in every land with enduring light of wisdom, so they may form brotherhood, which strive to further the art of peace under law, enduring blessings by their love. Grant us now thy continued blessings upon unity and strength that make victory possible in war, and we may win greater victory of peace. And finally, O oh Lord, Please bless the uh, families of the MIAs and POWs PLW still unaccounted for in war and conflict. Amen. Amen. The presentation of colors will be presented by Eisenhower High School MJROTC Captain W. Luster. Please recite their Pledge of Allegiance with me. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the National Anthem. the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled
please take your seats. At this time, it's our privilege to have three ladies from uh, the Ladies Auxiliary Post uh, 422 place a wreath at the flagpole. The, uh, the ladies presenting today are Judy Massey, Darlene Bennett, and Irene Gade. Being escorted by the uh, young Marines. Okay, the flag will be lowered to half mast, please. Rise and hand salute. Two. God Bless America will be performed by the Vintage Singers Trio.
like to introduce you to George Apker. George is a volunteer veteran of the year for the 62nd Assembly District. George is a Rialto resident. He donates a lot of time to this city. He's uh, one of those caring people that is out there uh, quite often uh, doing things for code enforcement and other departments in the city. So George, welcome and thank you for being our 62nd Assembly Volunteer Veteran of the Year. Good morning, everybody. You're not going to get tired of saying that this morning now, are you? Uh, my name's Ed Palmer. I'm a Rialto City Councilman. That's my privilege this morning to introduce the dignitaries that, that showed up today and also the volunteers that helped put this um, event on today. First, I'm going to thank the commissioners on our city commissions that were involved as volunteers. And if you're here, if you could please stand up. From our Human Relations Commission, Lino Martinez. Well, look, he's back in the back. Also from the Human Relations Commission, Linda Chapman. From the same commission, Karen Lozano. From our Utilities Commission, Richard Chitwood. Mr. Chitwood. And from our Mobile Home Rent Review Commission, Sarah Garcia. From the Rialto City Council, we have Mayor Pro Tem Ed Scott. Our Mayor Grace Vargas. Council Member Deborah Robertson. Deborah, stand up. You can see you. Yeah, myself, uh, Ed Palmer. <laughs> we also have City Administrator over to our to your right, the Mike Story. And standing in the back, I noticed our fire chief, Matt Freitas. The wave back there. From our Rialto Unified School District, president of the board, Joanne Gilbert. Ms. Gilbert's coming back. Um, also, I would like to uh, recognize one of the women that, well, the, the main person that put this event on and is in charge of everything, our city clerk, uh, Barbara McGee. <laughs> and then our own county supervisor, who's very busy this morning, uh, Josie Gonzalez. <laughs> now, later on in the program, we have a place for the dignitaries to make remarks if they want to. I know Josie is very busy this morning. She's got to be at another event in about 15 or 20 minutes, which takes about 15 minutes to get there. So if she would like to make her remarks now, I would invite her up to the podium to make any remarks she may have. It's a pleasure to be with you once again today as we come together to commemorate memories, memories that were made by the men and women who decided that the United States of America and everything that we believe in had merit and deserved to be defended and protected. I will tell you that every year that we come together to commemorate, to remember, to allow our children to see the, the development of where we were, where we are, and where we need to be, and how closely knit life truly is. It's my honor this morning to speak to you and to say, Happy Memorial Day to each and every one of you. And to remind you that symbolism, symbolism 
is a word that we live and breathe every day. Whether it's this pin I'm wearing that symbolizes San Bernardino County, whether it's any of the insignias on the front of the program, whether it's a pink ribbon, which many of us identify as the ribbon to cure breast cancer. Regardless, it is the flag that is the biggest symbol of everything that weaves us together. And when we see this flag anywhere across the entire world in any nation, especially in those nations where there is strife and oppression and slavery and repression because of religious beliefs or because of dominance of one party over another. It is this flag, it is these colors and the formation, the design by which we look at this and say this is freedom. This is why men and women fight. Freedom is the ultimate right, and I will tell you that it is not inalienable. It is only inalienable right after someone has fought and died and scratched and clawed their way to preserve what we call freedom. And it is in their memory, and it is in appreciation for all those sacrifices and lives that were paid for freedom by which we commemorate what this flag means to us. Thank you so very much for making the time to come out today. May you each be blessed as you go out throughout your day, and let us, let us show our children through example, through pride and respect, what a great country they live in and the fact that they need to stand up and fight and continue to protect our flag and make sure that freedoms are pres preserved for future generations because we, those of us that are older, we are on our way out. We are but passing through and it is to our children that we must entrust the love of freedom and the religion by which we choose to practice and the things we choose to do, that it is only through freedom that they are preserved for them. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Josie, for those insightful and stirring words. I thought they were great. Uh, can I get Barbara McGee back up here, please? Barbara? Uh, too, yeah, too bad. At some point in time, you know, we have to put an event like this on, and I kind of glossed over it earlier, but a little bit more recognition. This whole event, from this side of the street to the other side of the street, the canopies, the balloons, uh, the young Marines, the ROTCs from all the school, have to be brought together in order to make this event happen. And it wouldn't happen unless we had somebody like Barbara McGee in our city that, that cares enough to put this thing together. And one of the citizens of Rialto wanted to say something to you, so Ms. Harris, could you come forward? Yes. This is not on your program, this is totally off the cuff. Well, it didn't look scary up here from down there, but it's scary. <laughs> I would just like to say thank you to each and every one of you. My son is in the military, too. He's stationed at Fort Polk. I had asked him, what would you say to all of you? He would like me to tell you, I'm sorry, I might cry, just relax. This is their war. They'll do it on their own. But they want to thank each and every one of you for everything that you've done for them. Now, Barbara. Barbara always stands in the background. 
and she works hard for each and every one of you, and I'd like to present this to Barbara and to thank each and every one of you for being here. It's my privilege to introduce two fellow comrades from post 7103. And uh, okay, they will uh, do the POW MIA remembrance ceremony. Those who have served and those currently serving in uniformed services of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace always has been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and interment. Before we begin our activities this evening, we will pause to remember our prisoners of war and missing in action. We call your attention to this small table which occupies a place of dignity and honor near the head table. It is set for one symbolizing the fact that our armed forces personnel are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and families tonight, so we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and to bear witness to their continued absence. This table, set for one, is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her oppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single rose in the vase signifies the blood that they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of our missing comrades, families, and friends who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The red ribbon on the vase represents the red ribbon worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us tonight. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifice. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. Thank you. The beautiful voice in the background was that of Ed Barton, post 777, he passed away about three years ago. But it's just an honor to hear his voice every year. 
And if I could, I'd like to give a special thanks to uh, Post 710. Post 710 is in San Bernardino. They've been here with us every year uh, for this uh, memorial uh, remembrance. So uh, again, thank you. Our, our speaker this year is David Montes. David is a is retired from the United States Marines. He was born and raised in Glassell Park, Los Angeles, in April 20, on April 21st, 1979. He's been fortunate and blessed to have five siblings and two outstanding parents. He was raised in a Catholic Christian environment and attended Catholic schools. He attended St. Bernard's elementary school where he learned about himself and learned about morals, honesty, self-respect, and sports. He played football, basketball, volleyball. He had high expectations to win the CIF every year in both football and volleyball and considers himself to be very competitive. He attended Bellamine Jefferson High School in 1970, 1993, he continued playing sports and was the most valuable player in both football and volleyball. That's a big B. In three of four years. He also took his education seriously, made the honor roll of all four years of high school. After graduating high school in 1997, he enrolled in the United States Marine Corps. He had the honor of serving eight years. The majority of his time was spent in the reserves. He was stationed in 3 Angelico, Long Beach, California. He did two years of active duty with this unit, and in 2003, his unit was called to active duty to serve in Operation Enduring Freedom. He was stationed in Camp Pendleton for a couple of months and then went to Iraq for several months. He returned back home to the United States nearly after, after several months. He completed three additional months on active duty in Long Beach. During this whole time in the reserves and active duty, he was attending California State University of California. He enrolled in the university in 2000. He tried to graduate in four years, but getting called into active duty delayed it for nearly a year. He was also fortunate to make the Dean's List all four years and in 2005, he graduated with honors and earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and minor, a minor in management. In 2004, he met his wife, Sandra, and got married in 2006. He moved out to San Bernardino to be close to her family. They've been in the area since then. In 2010, he was blessed to have, they were blessed to have their first child, Julian Montes. He says that is the best thing that could have ever happened to him. He moved to San, when he moved to San Bernardino, he heard a lot about Walgreens. He decided to apply at Walgreens and put his knowledge of management from what he'd learned in college and in the Marines to test. In 2005, he had the opportunity to get an interview for assistant manager. He is now a store manager for one of the stores here in Rialto. He's been with the company for almost seven years and he finds Walgreens to be the best job he's ever had. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. David Montes. Thank you, thank you very much. Can everybody see me? I, I got a little podium here. Okay. Well, uh, it's been a while that I did a little public speaking, so please bear with me. Uh, I do appreciate that. That's just uh, my life in a quick uh, nutshell. Uh, about uh, two months ago, um, I went to the city hall and I asked uh, city clerk, Barbara Council Member Deborah, what is it that I can do to, uh, to be part of the community? You know, I work for Walgreens and right now we're striving for health and wellness. And we went over a couple of events, and uh, I'm here now. 
So it, it is an honor, it's a privilege, and uh, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Memorial Day for me was just uh, another day. It was just uh, a day off of work, a day off of school. And uh, when I enlisted in the Marines and having my brothers and friends and uh, everything that I've learned from the past, it was, uh, it was just, uh, it, was, it meant a lot to me. So I was, uh, you know what, I, I do appreciate all those who have served, who are serving, and those who will serve in the future. I mean, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So there was, uh, sure, right now we got some friends that are out there sacrificing their lives. And uh, once again, I do pre appreciate, you know, all, all their service. And... Um, if any of you need anything from me, I'm just down the street off uh, Merle and uh, Riverside. Uh, they're pretty much there all, all morning. And uh, once again, we're striving for health and wellness. I know there's been a couple of changes with the company, but if you need anything, please, please let me know. Uh, June 23rd, uh, we'll be having a customer appreciation day where I hope uh, I can see you folks there. We'll have uh, some great savings, uh, more about, you know, learn about more of our pharmacy. And, um, and coupon savings. Uh, once again, I do appreciate that. I appreciate my family from coming down from LA to see this, and I appreciate all for you, all for being here. Once again, thank you again. Is Mr. Toshiba, Toshiro Kanbara present? 442nd Regional Combat Team, Japanese American, World War II veteran. Would, at this time, would all of the Korean veterans please stand? The, our post has given me a list of the known members we're missing a few. Uh, proud to introduce Dr. John Kazlunas as one. Raymond Dash, Gilbert Baker, Robert Bennett, he's here today. Leroy Berenger, Howard Betts, Raymond Bordner, Edward Bowler, John Bundus, Richard Busey, John Keynes, Richard Cardozi, Paul Karangela, John Clark, George Dades, Hollis Donaldson, Preston Hammond, Noel Heft, John Encontro, Roy Inge, Richard Jacobs, Charles Jones, Lawrence Jordan, Loyal Cohn, Gary Layton, Abraham Lujan, Douglas Merrick, Steve Miranda, Arthur Montijo, Joseph Mooney, John Namath, Philip O'Malley, Robert Pasowitz, Gary Poulter, Sammy Samra, Richard Sanchez, John Schwalbach, Ed Owey, John Schleds, William Smith, George Sneed, Glenn Sterling, Herb Straw, Don Seuss, Gustavo Uliola. Why'd I kill that one? Uh, Mike Velarde, Rick Viramontes, Richard, Richard Walker, Dale Welker, Robert Westerson, 
Thomas Wilson, and Emilio Zudiga. On this list, I did not read those that left us in this last year. There are seven, which is why the National Cemetery out at March Air Force Base has an average of 66 services a day. That's one cemetery out of many, many, many put laying to rest 66 veterans a day, not including Green Acres or Montecito or any of the other local uh, cemeteries. We're losing way too many people too fast. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome and introduce you to our very own congressman who lives in our city, Congressman, United States Congressman Joe Baca. Well, good morning. Uh, I want to thank all of you, you know, for being here this morning and recognizing many of our fallen heroes as we look at this Memorial Day holiday. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I want to thank the City of Rialto, city elected officials from the City of Rialto for putting on this event, not only this year, but year after year, uh, because we've got to continue to recognize many of our men and women who have served our country uh, from the past and those that are currently serving us now. And too often, we forget many of our men and women who have served us. And I appreciate the fact that the city of, of Rialto has taken that kind of a leadership. And when you look at the leadership and you look at the flags that are out here, there's a symbol for each one of these flags that are there, and many of those who have served our country and who have died. And we pay homage to them. Just as a writer by the name of uh, G.K. Uh, Chilstrand once said, freedom is almost a contradiction in terms. It means the strong desire to live, taking the form of readiness to die. And as a veteran who served both in the 101st and 82nd Airborne Division, it gives me a great privilege to be here on this Memorial Day, not simply because it's a day off, but it's a day that we must pay tribute. I believe that on this Memorial Day and future Memorial Days that will be coming up, I think for all of us who have served in some form of a military or another, is that we should, on this Memorial Day or Veterans Day, is that we should have a symbol on us designating that we served in the military. Because a lot of times you are with your brothers and sisters right next to you, and you don't know if they've served this country. I have my wings on right here. So I've served in the 101st 82nd, and I was six foot five. <laughs> but I made these jumps, I'm only five foot six, you know. But I wear this, and we should all have some kind of a symbol that, that recognizes us. Could all of the men and women who have served in the military at one point or another please stand up? Please stand up. Let's acknowledge all of the men and women who have served this country. Give them a round of applause. They were willing to leave their homes, their families, as well as those fallen heroes who didn't return. They left not knowing if they were going to come back. And all you have to ask each one of them when they went and they served, they didn't know their brothers, their sisters, their parents, you can sit down now, didn't know if they were going to return. But they went because they believed in this country. And we continue to believe in this country because it is the greatest country on earth. That's why so many people want to come here. Because we have freedoms that others don't have. And we must remember that. And for the children that are here, remember always to thank a veteran for allowing you to go to school, to be all that you want to be. 
And you wouldn't be able to be all that you want to be if it hadn't been for some veteran or another, like Joe Baca Jr., you know, who was a past, you know, assemblyman and now city councilman. I serve, so now he's allowed to come out here, and many others who have. But we must recognize those who served in World War I and World War II, Vietnam, the Korean War, and now Iraq and Afghanistan. But we must also remember those fallen ones when we look at the POW MIA, when we look at this. And the reason that we even honor them now, I'd like to pay tribute to a man in our audience that a lot of you don't know that came up with the idea that we should have recognition. And we were the first state in the nation to do that. And I carried it in the state legislature. But the man who came up with the idea is Joseph Radin. Please stand up. Joseph Radin. And that's where the idea came up. And he says, why don't you do something for you know, POWs, MIA? Thank you, Joseph. So today we honor many of those. But we also honor the memory of the 4,486 Americans who died in Iraq and the 1,976 who died in Afghanistan. We ask God for grace to protect these brave men and women still fighting in distant lands. Today we owe a special tribute and gratitude to the more than 35,000 veterans who are still fighting in, to represent my district. We also want to make sure that we recognize the 20 fallen heroes from the 43rd Congressional District surrounding areas who gave their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. And these are individuals, and especially right here from Rialto, there are a couple, and I'd like to mention their name, Sergeant uh, Jorge Molina Batista, who was killed by hostile uh, Hostile Ambar province during the uh, Operation Iraq. Army Specialist Luis Santos, 20 years of age, right here from Rialto. Private First Class William Fahar, Jr. Corporal Victor Garcia, a 20-year-old veteran. These are some of the men and women who died in Afghanistan. And we pray for these men and women that are there right now that they'll return back safely. But we want to make sure that when they return back, that we want to make sure that we're able to take care of our veterans. We ask them to serve our country. They're willing to serve our country. We deserve to make sure that we take care of them. Isn't that right when they return right back here to the United States? We've got to make sure that they receive the benefits, their spouses receive the benefits, and that they're taken, they're taken care of. They were willing to step up. They are willing to serve us. We have that responsibility. And we should. And as a citizen of this great country, as President Harry Truman once said, America was built not on fear, America was built on courage, on imagination, unbeatable determination to do the job. And with that I say, God bless you, God bless America, and thank you for being here, and thank the city of Rialto for making this great day. I want to thank the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, you know, Ed Scott, Ed Palmer, Deborah Robinson, Joe Baca Jr., some of the other members too as well, and the city as well as a whole. Thank you very much for putting this event. Continue to do that. And then on that note, I'd like to present to you with a, a certificate recognizing Memorial Day uh, here in the city of Rialto. Thank you very much. I'll give this to the mayor pro tem since the mayor is out there. So at this point, so thank you very much. I would like to also introduce you to California State Senator Gloria Negretti McLeod. And Senator, if you'd like to come up and say a few words. Can you see me? Good morning. It seems like uh, this is a busy day for everybody running back and forth from city to city because everybody recognizes the significance of this day. You know, for many people, especially the papers and everybody say, this is the start of 
of the, the holiday season. It starts the summer, but real, what it really is, it's a memorial to those, all of those who have served, men and women, who have served in the armed forces and continue to serve today. So for them, we gladly get out early in the morning to come out and make sure that we honor all of those who have served. And as, as someone said, all soldiers gave some, but some soldiers gave all. And for those, we, we come to honor. But we also honor the ones still serving today in the conflicts that we have in Iraq and Afghanistan. So for that, I'm so glad to join you this morning still morning, uh, that to come here and honor the, the brave men and women who continue to serve and who have served, who have given us the freedom that we so, that we take, many of us take for granted. So thank you for allowing me to speak to you this morning. Thank you. Additionally, I would like to welcome and introduce you to my fellow uh, council member, Joe Baca, Jr. Once again, I'd like to thank all three schools, uh, JROTC programs, for being here today, representing their school, and participating in the event. Next up is Eisenhower. Uh, Marine Junior ROTC program headed by Captain McCluster.
Thank you, Eisenhower, for a wonderful performance. Once again, I'd like to thank Dennis Birch for bringing out Chesty Puller, our uh, decorated Hummer over here. And I really am proud to say I'm part of Rialto and look at the beautiful fire engine displaying the colors. I'm proud to have been a Navy person during Vietnam, and it's my privilege to introduce Maricela Lozano. She'll be reciting the Sailor's Creed. Good morning. morning. Will all my sailors, future, past, and present, please stand? We are now going to recite the, the Sailor's Creed, so all past, present, please attention to the Sailor's Creed. I am United States Sailor. I will, re I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, and I will obey the orders of those appointed over me. I represent the fighting spirit of the Navy and those who have gone before me to defend freedom and democracy around the world. I proudly serve my Navy's, con my Navy's combat, my Navy's my country's Navy combat team with honor, courage, and commitment. I am committed to excellence and the fair treatment of all. Thank you. Booyah Navy. Please have Pat Carter uh, alert the pilot. Vintage singers, you are up. Before we sing this song, before we sing this song, we would like to take the time to say thank you. Thank you, veterans, for all that you've done for us. And uh, thank you to those who have gone before you to, to, the, arms of, to the arms of God when they laid down their lives for our country. Families, we thank you. Okay. I'd like to introduce the members of my group, please. On my right, Miss Karen Burnett, who lives in Rialto and has a business in Rialto. And on my left, her sister, Melissa Lewis, right next door from San Bernardino. I am John Brockhouse. I live here, and guess what? I'm the only ex-military person in this group, okay? Now then, we're going to sing the five military anthems. And as we sing, I know you veterans have risen enough, but if you can get up and sing along with us, or at least remember your fallen comrades, then after we're done with your song, Sit down. At the end, we'll call out all five services together, or individually, but stand up then. Okay, are we ready? Over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail As the great songs come rolling along In and out, hear them shout, counter-marching all about As those cave songs come rolling along For it's high, high, he in the field artillery Count out your numbers loud and strong Two, three, four, high, two, three For wherever you go you will always know that those caissons go rolling along. Anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. Farewell to college joys. We sail at break of day, 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 day. Through our Here 
question it's a question and answer period we're going to have here today you know um, for all your Marines out there I'm a Marine all right. and, uh, uh, all right. and you know after you get out of the Marines you really what you really never get out of uh, I retired 41 years ago and when you're uh, 30 years old you still think you're Superman when you're 40 years old, you still think you're Superman. When you're 50, it's, it's kind of a little shaky there. But when you hit 60, you, you know things are, you kind of got to slow down a little bit. That's when you have your health problems, your heart attacks, and, and you have to turn the reins over to somebody else, okay? Um, after we serve, uh, sometimes service isn't always just fighting in, in battles and stuff. Sometimes it's doing other things. And there's one other great honor, and I, I got this off the internet because somebody sent it to me. I thought how appropriate it is for today. About two months ago, there was a, on Jeopardy, the final question was this. How many steps does the guard take during his walk across the tomb of the unknown soldier? I didn't ask it yet. <laughs> Like these guys that know it. Yeah, 20 The point is, all of the contestants got it wrong. Nobody got it right. And, and probably if I ask it, if they didn't shout it out, I, how many would have known that it's 21 steps? Now, how many would know why it's 21 steps? And why is it? Yeah, well, I'll just answer it. It symbolizes the 21 gun salute, okay? Now, when they walk across and do their 21 steps, they pause, and then they make an about face and they walk back. And how many knows how long they pause for? There you go, 21 seconds, guys. <laughs> but let me tell you a little bit about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and those guards that apply for that. There are certain criteria that they, they have to 
to meet in order to be even considered for that position, which is an honor. Um, at this time, they must be males. Oh, I don't think we have any females that, females that have ever done it. They must be between the height of five foot ten and six foot two inches tall. And this is why I could never make it because they must have a waist size of thirty inches. I I, I didn't have that in high school. I don't think so. Never would have done it. And what they do is they sign on for a two-year term of a tour of duty at, at the tomb. When they sign on for that tour, they make certain commitments. And those commitments last for the rest of their lives. One of those commitments is they will never drink. So once they, they take that oath, they will never drink for the rest of their lives. They can never swear in public again for the rest of their lives. They live for two years under the tomb in barracks, under the tomb of the unknown soldier. For the first six months of that tour, they cannot talk to anybody. They cannot watch television. They cannot listen to the radio. Complete silence. For the first six months, they are studying um, who's interred in the cemetery, uh, the, the 168 most important people, who they are, what they've done, and where they are interred in the cemetery. Once they get out of that part, uh, they then became their guard duty at the tomb. As, as they get ready to do this tour, they spend five hours a day in front of a full-length mirror getting ready um, to do their walk. When they, when they finish this, they are then retired. Currently, I believe there are only 400 people that have been serving as guards for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Once they retire, they're given a wreath pin. They wear that wreath pin which identifies them as a guard of the Unknown Soldier. If they ever swear, they ever drink after that, they have to give up that wreath pin. Uh, nobody to date has ever given up that wreath pin. There has been continuous 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, since 1930. It's been going on. They have never taken a break. Not once. Guards are changed every 30 minutes. So you can imagine what that is. I mean, it's every 30 minutes you change a guard since 1930. That's amazing. Well, one story came out that when the hurricane came through Washington, D.C., and let me see where that was. It was in 2003, Hurricane Isabella was approaching Washington, and they were told by the President of the United States, look, we're evacuating. The Senate evacuated, the House evacuated, Congress was gone. And they told those guys, look, if you want to leave, you can leave. What did they say? They said no. They stayed out there during the rain, the wind. When the hurricane went by, they stayed there. They said this is a higher honor than leaving. So I want to acknowledge those that have ever served as a guard in the tomb of the unknown soldier, and let's give it up for them. This time, we will have a 21-gun salute.
San Bernardino Valley Young Marines, would you please raise the flag? The folding of the flag by Rialto High School NJROTC commanded by Sandy Jones. Did you know that at military funerals, the 21 gun salute stands for the sum of the numbers of the year 1776? Have you ever noticed how the honor guard pays meticulous attention? to correctly folding the American flag 13 times. You probably thought it was a symbol, it symbolized the original 13 colonies. But we learn something new every day, don't we? The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The sevenfold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth flag, correction, the eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers. For it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenthfold is a tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventhfold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrew eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in the Christian's eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
the 13th flag, 13th fold, or when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost reminding us of our nation's motto, in God we trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and the Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. God bless America. At this time, School Board President Joanne Gilbert would like to say a few words about the youth of our community. Good morning. Good morning. I would just like to say that when you look at these students out here, they represent the future of Rialto. And I want you to know also that school is officially out as of last Friday, but they are here serving our community because we offer in the Rialto Unified School District three armed forces that students can choose to participate in. And I want their instructors to come forward because what you see is done because we have leaders who teach these students to respect and serve their community. So I want Eisenhower, Marines, come forward. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Rialto High School, the Navy and Carter High School, the Army. Where is she? We have these three branches of the armed forces offered through training in the Rialto Unified School District. And when you see these students come out here and perform for you, they will do community service. Anytime you have a program organization that you need students to participate, they are willing to do that. They do it because they have leaders like these um, um, instructors. <laughs> but we're missing one. Where is Sergeant Cousins? I don't see her. But anyway, and school is out. And when school is out, what do students usually do? Play. But they're here serving you today, and I just want to thank them on behalf of the Rialto Unified School District. Thank you. Thank you. As we close our, our memorial today, I, I would just like to ask everybody to not only thank... There she is. Not only think about those who have left us, but those who are with us. And show your sign of gratitude to our veterans in this community. They're all very important to us. And as I was standing up here today, I was thinking about people leaving this world and, and how from one year to the next it is uh, so different. And, and I'd like to uh, recognize somebody that um, 
passed this last year who was important to a lot of people in this community, but very important to the American Legion. He served the American Legion for many years. He was a school teacher in this community, and uh, he was a very dear friend, and that is Willie Wilkin. So those of you that remember him, a round of applause. So once again, those of you that have parents that have served or grandparents in World War II, don't, don't, uh, don't forget them. Pay, some, pay some attention to them today. Spend some time with them. Um, it's very important. There's nothing more important than family. At this time, we'll uh, have our closing prayer, and it will be done by Pastor Elias Valdez of the Lost and Found Ministries International. Is there a plane coming? Before we pray, I'd just like to just read a scripture uh, from the Apostle Paul here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Let us pray. Father God, we thank You for this day, Father. As we pay tribute, Father, and as we pay our respects for those who have served and, and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Father God, let us never forget, Father, those men and women who have paved the way for us so that we can have a nation here that is filled with freedom and opportunity. And Father, may we continue to be a beacon of hope, Father, for those around the world, Father. Regardless of our uh, belief systems, Father, may we continue to be that beacon of hope. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Father God, as we close this ceremony today, Father, we pray that you be glorified in this, Father. And we give you all the glory and honor. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Again, I want to thank everybody for being here today. If you'll want to step out, you'll see a World War II vintage plane uh, getting ready to fly over us. And again, thank you for being here today. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. <laughs>